Imagine you needed to use a walking stick and you decided to make one out of glass. This would obviously be a really bad choice of material because glass is fragile. If you bang your glass walking stick against a rock, it's likely to shatter. A better material to use would be wood, as wood is much more robust than glass. It might wear down over time and slowly get weaker, but it is robust enough to withstand many more bangs and scrapes than the fragile glass. But better than both of these is our living bones in our legs. We need to use our bones to put stresses and strains on them in order for them to grow stronger. Without these stresses, our bones lose their strength and density, which is a real problem faced by astronauts in zero gravity. Glass is fragile, wood robust, our living bones are anti-fragile. This video is going to be a brief review and summary of Nassim Nicholas Taleb's fascinating book in which he coined the term anti-fragile. Taleb's book is a wide-ranging journey through ancient myths and personal anecdotes and historical events, all with the theme of recasting these stories as teaching us something about the property of being anti-fragile. As Taleb notes at the start of the book, carving up the world in a particular way and then naming parts of it can be a powerful way to aid our understanding and ways of talking about the world. And it is with this goal in mind that Taleb motivates the introduction of this new term, anti-fragile. And he argues that without this word, we seem to have a blind spot that makes us assume that the only two options are for things to either be fragile or robust. Something is fragile if it is easily damaged by disturbances of one kind or another. Something is robust if it can withstand a certain level of disturbances without being damaged. And then, rather than the traditional view that takes fragile and robust as opposites, Taleb argues that they are the first two parts of a triad, where the missing part is to say that something is anti-fragile if it actually gets stronger or benefits from disturbances. So, anti-fragile is the true opposite of fragile, and although it may at first seem like an odd concept, once it's named and explained, you can see that there are many well-known examples of things that are anti-fragile. And they're some of the most interesting things we know about. The most obvious example is life itself. While each individual animal of a species dies at some point, the tough competition of survival actually makes each species as a whole stronger through the process of evolution. The individual animal may be fragile, but the species as a whole is anti-fragile. But an easy mistake would be to think that the term anti-fragile is just a rebadging of the ideas of evolution. Anti-fragility is a property that some kinds of things have, and evolution is one mechanism that can achieve this property. But there are other examples of things that are anti-fragile that don't get this property through an evolutionary mechanism. The anti-fragility of bones is an obvious example. Another example that Taleb gives is about restaurants. Even though each individual restaurant in a city is fragile to going bust, the collective of restaurants is anti-fragile. And he means this in the following sense. Imagine that the local government in one city decided to support all of the local restaurants so that none of them would go bust. Then there'd be no existential pressure to keep the restaurateurs on their best form, competing hard to win over the custom of those dining out in the city. It's likely that the quality of food in that city would therefore suffer. In contrast, if another city allows the restaurants offering a poor experience to fail, allows them to be fragile, then not only does this keep the pressure on the restaurants to offer great cuisine, but it also will allow space for new entrants to come along, taking the place of the failed restaurants. This second city is therefore more likely to have a diverse set of high quality restaurants that are innovating in the cuisine that they offer. So letting the restaurants be exposed to the stresses of competition enables the city-wide restaurant scene to be anti-fragile. 
And this example highlights the general pattern that Taleb identifies for systems that are anti-fragile. They're composed of fragile or perishable parts that together make up an anti-fragile larger entity. The fragile individual animals making up the anti-fragile species. The fragile bone cells that make up our anti-fragile bones. However, this pattern is a non-trivial thing for us to know how to handle in a modern, caring society. Of course we care about having good outcomes for society as a whole, but we also care about the experiences of the individuals. Maybe if we want our society to benefit from anti-fragility, then we need to find ways to allow failures to happen, but in a way that is not too devastating for the individuals involved. So maybe the social safety net should not be about stopping people from falling, but about catching them safely when they do, and then helping them up and on to their next thing. Indeed, one of the themes that comes across throughout the book is Taleb's suggestion that our instincts to try to protect and control things often turn out to be counterproductive. If we protect the individual restaurants from ever going bust, we damage the quality of cuisine served in the city. And in the book, Taleb particularly explores this theme in relation to the 2008 crash of the financial sector and the history of the medical profession, where there are examples of well-intentioned doctors actually doing more harm than good. More generally, Taleb links these unintended consequences of intervention to our inability to predict the future and our overconfidence in the models and theories we use to try to understand the world. This theme of the book links back to his earlier book, Black Swan, and his ongoing frustrations with academia. He refers to people who rely too heavily on their optimized mathematical understanding of the world as fragilistas, as he argues that, however well-intentioned, their actions and influence on society have made many aspects more fragile than they used to be. A crude summary of this idea is that he thinks our society often encounters systems that have a small amount of regular randomness, systems in what he calls mediocristan. And by controlling them tightly to remove the randomness, we actually convert them into systems in extremistan, where the process may be much smoother for most of the time, but then occasionally it has a huge black swan event that is, in the end, much more damaging than would have been the case if we just learned to live with the original level of randomness that the system started with. In essence, he thinks that by trying to make our systems more robust, we actually just change the profile of the way in which they're fragile. His suggestion is that we should instead aim to make our systems anti-fragile. But at times, it feels as if there's a deep, unresolved tension in Taleb's thinking. He rails against modernists who champion theories and models, and yet he himself is deeply mathematical in his thinking. I'm not sure if Taleb has somewhere articulated in detail a kind of synthesis position, as would seem to be implied by this tension, but I haven't yet found it. Rather, Taleb sometimes comes across as a kind of neo-modernist who just thinks that the others get the maths wrong. And yet, much of what he talks about has at least echoes of the kinds of concerns raised by postmodernists like Foucault, albeit through a very different style of analysis. So Taleb's work seems to raise many questions that aren't then fully addressed. But I'd be curious to hear in the comments if anyone knows of a text where Taleb does try to forge some kind of synthesis position, as this is a key interest of mine. Indeed, my thinking around portfolism is precisely an attempt to clearly articulate just such a synthesis. And in another video, I will explore the ways that portfolism suggests that we can use the notion of anti-fragility in an attempt to improve the health and quality of our public discussions. But in Taleb's book, this unresolved tension is particularly noticeable in his use of anecdotes that promote his attraction to hard-earned wisdom, such as when he talks about the wise guy, Fat Tony, or the wisdom of your grandmother. Surely, for every wise guy who gets their investment strategy right, there's another one who failed. 
And just because your smoking grandma is doing well into her 90s, that doesn't mean that her opinion about smoking is good medical advice. If nothing else, survivor bias has to be considered alongside the merits of hard-earned wisdom. And I don't recall Taleb in this book ever proposing a kind of meta-strategy for how we should decide when to listen to grandma and when not. But overall, I really enjoy reading Taleb's books, even if I don't always agree with him. If you can tolerate his caustic style, then they're full of a rich seam of interesting, provocative ideas that make me sit back and think. And the idea of anti-fragility is a really powerful and useful one that I often use now. So anti-fragile is well worth a read. I hope this review was useful, and if you've enjoyed it, then please do click on the like button below or subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.